Got to drink up on a Monday. <laughs> Welcome back. Thanks for having coffee with me this morning. So this is our um, morning devotional together. We had this passage yesterday from the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew 18. Um, Jesus' steps to conflict resolution, right? Uh, first uh, face-to-face, then bring in a neutral party. Then the assembly, kind of let him go. And I wonder, you know, we, we talk about uh, how conflict is necessary in life, even though it can be uncomfortable. Uh, I don't know. Conflict just seems like a word that's on the tip of the tongue a lot in 2020, right? Whether it be the stress from COVID and the economic issues as well, or I don't know if you've heard there's an election come November. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot going on and there's a lot of conflict. So I wonder, does Jesus's words of how to deal with conflict from Matthew chapter 18 work for us in the year 2020? Do we need to make updates? I don't think so. We're going to explore the four aspects Tuesday through Friday in our devotional. I think we're looking at each one. You know, I, I personally I love these coffee videos, by the way. I love that we're able to have our morning together like this. But I love that uh, you can't get to everything in a sermon. Unless sermons going to be like an hour long, you know? And this way we can expand. We can, we can try to live out the gospel text uh, that God has for us. Conflict resolution is something we need in 2020. Or as uh, <clears throat> a good friend of mine once used to say, um, it, why isn't this text the th in the Thanksgiving liturgy, right? Uh, when you get together all the family, it seems like the conflict resolution text might come a little handy. We all have that one uncle at the table, right? <laughs> yeah, and, and you get on Facebook now, and I'm sure other social media platforms, but I know when I get on Facebook... I am instantly bombarded with conflict about everything you can think of. Again, the, the election's a big part of it. I have, I have friends of many different uh, dispositions, shall we say, politically and otherwise. Um, but even things like, remember the, the, the one that went viral about what color is the dress? Even just little things like that. <laughs> Conflicts all around us. So what do we do with conflict like that, where it's just around us all the time? What do we do with conflict that is one-on-one, -on -one, as Jesus says? Or are they the same? Now, I'm not encouraging you today, uh, drink up that coffee and go out and, and comment away and win. No. I think changing hearts and minds takes time. It takes care. I think investing in people. Telling people you, you care for them. I think that's a good start. As we explore the, the various steps this week, I think we'll look and see it's about an intentionality. What Jesus is getting at. It's about being intentional. You care enough work on this conflict resolution, that you care enough about that person, the relationship you have with them, whatever it may be, family, friend, whatever, colleague, you care enough about them to put in the work to bury the hatchet, whatever it is, no matter how trivial or how serious. God knows what God's doing. God knows conflict is inevitable. In fact, conflict can be healthy in the long term if we know how to handle it, fortunately. God gives us the tools to do that. And so in this 2020 world, today, we're going to pray. Please join me. Holy God, in this time right now that's so stressful and exhausting and tumultuous, conflict is all around us, on our social medias, in our communities, perhaps even in our own homes, at work, in schools, it's a divisive time. We ask that you give us 
the tools and the strength and the care to commit to res conflict resolution that's effective. Give us a heart that cares for the neighbor and is willing to do the work of resolution. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Have a good day.